So, hi all, it's Blue here, finally. Um, it's been a long minute since I last did a video, and I've been feeling pretty bad about it. Now, I know no one watches these, but it's as much for me, intended to keep, kind of keep me on track for 2020, make sure that I'm keeping going with my book reading challenge, which, just as a reminder, was 37 books for the year. So, last time I recorded was back in... February, March, um, and I was suffering with bronchitis, which was thankfully all it was. Um, we're all healthy over here, just a pregnancy and lockdown to deal with, nothing major. Um, so, seven and a half weeks is quite a while. Um, needs no haircut, which means I'm a mess of half blonde, half brown hair. But at least no one sees it, right? Just the odd Zoom call every now and then. Uh, anyway, books is why I'm here books is what we're here for so um, last time around I had read I think I'd read six of my 37 books which was not not great um, happy to say I'm now three ahead of schedule for the year I've gone to Goodreads's tracker I'm on 15 so I've read nine books since the last time I filmed when I had just finished reading Shadow Black by Sebastian de Castel and Lady Smoke, I think, by Laura Sebastian. Um, so, nine more to talk about. Um, first up was part of my book club with the Still Buffering podcast like fan base was um, Sometimes I Lie by Alice Feeney. Um, interesting book about a woman who's in a coma, uh, told from the perspective of... Well, it's all her perspective from before the coma and during the coma. And it was just a really interesting kind of... You're not sure if it's an unreliable narrator. You're not sure what's really going on. It was really quite interesting. Um, I think I gave it four stars on Goodread, but I'm pretty sure I give everything four stars, if we're being honest. Um, I thought it was really well written. Um, I would recommend it. I've since passed it on to my mum to read, who's passed it on to her mum. So, you know, we've all got to do something to pass the time in these days. Um, second one I read was... Um, the first Mistborn book, uh, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson, um, which I loved. It took me so long to get going with. I think I must have, I probably read it for about six weeks, didn't really get that far with it. Probably got about a third of the way in. And then when I finished Sometimes I Lie, I just plowed straight through with it and I kind of got it done in about a week from that point on. Um, like, it's, it's by no means the longest book I've read this year or anything, but it took a while to get through. Um, but I really enjoyed it. And it's... I just like the kind of heist-type setting um, that it has. I thought the characters were all interesting, especially Vin. She's just great. Um, I haven't got the second one yet, but I really want to read it. Um, thing is, I bought a physical copy of the first one, and I really want to get a physical one of each of them. But I want to get it from... An actual bookshop i don't want to just order it through amazon um so just got to wait for that lockdown to go <laughs> then we can actually get somewhere um after that i finished the um trilogy by laura sebastian by reading um, ember queen um which i thought was good um like the whole series as a whole is a, a ya fantasy that's really kind of it's fairly light to read it's quite quick and breezy um, it's like serious topics, but really easy to read. And whilst I really enjoyed Ash, Princess and Lady Smoke, I thought Ember Queen fell a bit short of those two. Um, the ending didn't kind of go the way I wanted it to go. It didn't go the way I thought it would go. Um, so credit to her for that, because that was, it was quite a good story. I just, it didn't have that payoff for me that I was hoping for. Um, which is not to say that other people wouldn't actually follow it properly. It wouldn't get what they were hoping for. So... I'd recommend it. It's it's a really good kind of entry level YA trilogy. That's just all of them are out, so you can just go straight through. Uh, I think my fiance read them uh, each in a day. Um, it took me a bit longer, but you know, <laughs> I got a lot going on. A lot of books. Um, After Ember Queen was um, Magician by Raymond Feist. Um, so I'm part of a mid cameo discord so it came being the world that the majority of feist's books are set in um and i think my fiance recommended these books to me seven years ago now uh i think i've read all 30 books two or three times since then some of them more some of them 
maybe maybe only twice um but man i love those books i could go on and on about magician especially which uh, i think in the states was released as magician apprentice and magician master um anyway it's, it's like one of my favorite books of all time i've read magician on its own five times i reckon now um and it's a beefy book i mean it got split into two um but man i could just go on about that book it's it's just got fantastic world building and all the characters have great development arcs and it never kind of overwhelms you with like here's 50 characters all at once learn all about them it's very much a here's your five guys we'll learn about them here's the world go um i think the only criticism i really have is there's no real main female characters to speak of uh, at least not in um the rift war saga the first contained trilogy um that kind of started everything off. Now there was um, three books that were written by Raymond Feist and Jenny Wurtz um, that kind of run parallel to Magician, Silverthorn and Darkness at Sethanon, which is the Empire trilogies, which focus mainly on a really strong, impressive female lead character um, called Mara, who is just fantastic. So I'm kind of waiting for a our reread of this that we're doing during this lockdown on the Discord server to kind of get to that Empire trilogy because they're some of the best books. Um, after that, I think it was Audition by Ryu Murakami, um, which I, I was just looking for a short book to read. I've got a few of his books on the bookshelf over there. Um, I have not read them since I was about mid-twenties, so we're talking ten years. Um, I just thought I'd give it another go. I read audition which is a bit creepy but it's good it's good um so it's it's basically there's a guy that loses his wife um i can't remember now even though i only read it about three weeks ago um but he loses his wife uh, he's moved on with his life just isn't quite happy in where he wants to be so he decides he's going to look for a new wife um but he doesn't really know anyone and a friend of his who works alongside him in production says why not hold an audition um so they they set up this fake film this fake script everything and call in 40 50 women for interviews to like audition uh, audition for the role and it kind of it doesn't go uh, the way he wanted it i mean it's it's a kind of it's a, a bleak thriller so it's it's not all like, oh yeah, his his new wife, woo, um, but it's a really, it's a really interesting read. I mean, it's got it's written slightly differently to most um, Western books in that the author's Japanese. You can tell it's being translated, and there's some things that is just okay. That's an interesting way of putting that, or that's an interesting way of putting that that you wouldn't necessarily think of. So it's it's quite cool to kind of get that kind of view. Um, anyway, after audition. I think, yeah, that was when I finished A Conjuring of Light by V.E. Schwab. Man, I love that trilogy. The, um, what is it? Dark Shade of Magic trilogy. The London um, series. So, uh, yeah, I read A Conjuring of Light, um, which is just fantastic. I mean, I loved all three of the books, start to finish. Once I'd started reading them, I just couldn't stop. They were just so good. I think they're they're a perfect kind of, if you're just looking for something to occupy you through lockdown and you want a YA fantasy trilogy, I would recommend that trilogy above anything else. Um, I think Victoria Schwab's a fantastic author. Um, sometimes it gets a bit rambly, but so do I. So, eh. <laughs> it's perfect. Um, after that, uh, I think that's six of the nine, it would have been The Lost Causes of Bleak Creek by Rhett McLaughlin and Link Neal of Good Mythical Morning fame. Um, I really didn't know what to expect from this book. Um, being from Rhett and Link, I, I'm, I don't know any anything really about their writing credentials or anything, but it was really good. Like, it's kind of a Stranger Things like um, investigation thriller, um, if you want. Um, but it's, it's a fairly short book, probably only, I, I think I read it in three or four sittings of like an hour to two hours each so it's not heavy duty um 
you can very much tell it's written by Rhett and Link. The two main characters, I uh, can't remember their names exactly, but it's an R and it's an L. Um, Leaf. And I can't remember. Um, not important, Dan. Anyway, um, you can really tell it's the two of them. Um, it, there's just so much about their characters and their personalities that come through in the book. Um, I really enjoyed it. And whilst my mum's never been a mythical beast, I guess, uh, I've given her the book to read and said, Mum, here you go. You want something to read? Read this. This is fantastic. Um, so... Up next was Silverthorn by Raymond Feist, the sequel to Magician, um, which is one of the better ones because it sees the introduction really of, well, it's not, the, there's a character called Jimmy the Hand, basically he's a 14, 15 year old thief um, living on the streets in the main city that a lot of the plot happens in. Um, just part of a gang of thieves that run the underground of the city. And he's introduced a couple of times in Magician, but... Silverthorn is really his big debut, like his big coming out party where it's it's all about Jimmy the Hand really and he's just fantastic. He's probably one of my favourite characters from any series. He's a uh, he's fourteen or fifteen and he's written as if he's fourteen or fifteen. A lot of times in books I feel like you get, oh, this character's sixteen and they've got the responsibility of the world on them and they're like they do not feel like they're a teenager. But Jimmy is just written perfectly um, he's such a scamp. <laughs> um, anyway, the, the ninth book that I read over the last three months now um, was the third Spellslinger book in the trilogy by Sebastian de Castel, and that's um, Charmcaster. Um, I was trying to read Ninth House by Lee Bardugo, but man, I just found that book so slow and uninteresting. Um, there's some rather questionable scenes in that book and I gave up after um, I was probably about a quarter of the way through the book and it just hadn't clicked for me so I was like no I'm not wasting any more of my time on this so I swapped over to Charmcaster just to get something quick and something something just more interesting going and seeing as I'd already read Spellslinger Shadow Black I thought I'll, I'll go into a trilogy, oh, not a trilogy, I'll read the third book of a series that I know is something I enjoy. Um, so I read Charmcaster pretty quickly, probably a couple of days. Um, and yeah, that became my ninth book of lockdown, my 15th book of the year, which is crazy to think. Um, but now halfway through that series, there's um, Soulbinder, Queenslayer, and some else that I don't own still to come after Charmcaster so I'm really interested to see where that goes because it's a series I didn't know anything about I just saw the cover of the first book and I was like that's cool I know don't judge a book by its cover but covers are cool and like why not um, so after that I guess all that's really left is to talk, to talk about what I'm reading now um, so I'm reading A Darkness at Sethanon by Raymond E. Feist uh, as part of my Discord read-along. That's the third book in the Rift War saga. After that, we're moving on to the Sons of Crondor duology, I think. So I think our next one is the King's Buccaneer or Prince of the Blood, something along that line. Um, this, there's so many different reading paths you could take with the mid Kemia books, but... Um, we're doing Darkness of Sethan on first, and then we'll move on. Um, so I'm about four chapters into that, really. So not nowhere, really. It's a, it's a good 400 pages, I'd say. So probably about 10% of the way through. Um, but chapter a day, we'll keep getting there. Um, I'm also trying to take part in Read with Cindy's Asian Readathon for the month of May. The idea is to read books by Asian authors, um, Asian author, to, to, well the first challenge is to read a book by an Asian author, then there's read a book um, by an Asian author who's similar to you, or read a book by an Asian author who's different to you in some way, um, or not, not necessarily just an author, it could just be based in that kind of setting, inspired by that setting, or recommended to you by someone who is Asian, and so 
I've started with Shadow of the Fox by Judy Kagawa. I've seen that recommended so many times. Um, and I'm about halfway through and really enjoying it. It It's a little bit odd. Each chapter is told. Um, there's two main characters and the chapters alternate their perspective. Um, which was a little bit weird at first just reading it and not knowing when you're starting the chapter. Okay, who is who is read who is whose voice is this one in is this the female character or the male character i do not know um but i'm also listening to the audiobook alongside reading it um and they are obviously different voices for the different characters so that's nice and helpful <laughs> um i've also got a book called the supernova era um saved on my phone from my library i do not know how to pronounce the author's name I don't want to try and say it because it will not be right um, but I've got that ready to go I uh, believe it's a sci-fi story um, again saw it quite recommended and then also just on my desk over to the side of me I have a book called this time will be different by Misa Sugiura um, which is sat over on my desk uh, ready to read for one of the challenges i don't know which challenge had which number but i'm just trying to do my part to take part um anyway uh, that's everything from me um so i guess let's maybe not leave it three months till the next one who knows <laughs> <laughs>